right guys it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for honeybee stamps also happy world card making day I showed you these um, bitty buzzwords for fall but I didn't actually end up using them I did however use the garden harvest florals and pumpkin patch um, <laughs> I use pumpkin patch every year and when honeybee retires this set I'm gonna be heartbroken because <laughs> Every fall I pull this set out. Every fall I pull this set out. Like I cannot, I put the pumpkins on everything. Um, and the garden harvest florals, like there's flowers and a watering can like right up my alley. Of course I couldn't wait to use this. So first things first, we're gonna do our background. You will notice that this video is a little bit sped up. It's because there was so much going on. There's a lot of coloring. Um, so I just, I had to speed it up a smidge. Here, I wanted to create a background that was gonna be a contrasting color. And I knew that I was gonna have a lot of like oranges. Um, and so I decided instead of going blue, which I usually do, I would go teal. And I wasn't disappointed. I really, really liked it. Also, it gave me an excuse to use one of the newer um, Distress inks that I have purchased, which is salvaged patina, which is what I'm using here. It's a beautiful color. Um, it's almost like the, it's like the teal version of tumbled glass <laughs> in the um, teal family. Like it's just super light. I shouldn't say super light. It's a, the lightest teal that they offer. That's like a true teal. Um, and I, I'm here for it. I love it. So gave myself a little bit of like a dirt ground and then um, just doing the background these teal colors um, from here I went to the peacock feathers which is still a tried and true favorite and then to add um, some darker color I used mermaid lagoon I hope like because you know he's still releasing colors right so um, my hope is that at some point he releases a darker richer teal because like right now we have like pine needles which is on the blue side but not I wouldn't call it a teal and then there is forest moss which is a true like darker yellow green which is also a great fall color um, but I'm hoping Tim come on Tim that he shows up with a darker a much darker richer teal that would make me super happy but you know I just gotta wait with the rest of the world and see what he comes up with so I always do um, my distress inking twice you guys know that I feel like it gives me a much better blend and so that's what I'm doing here just bringing down those colors and then I'm gonna do um, some spatters in the background because that's how I roll and because of the colors that I chose for this card um, oh, I got a little blocker at the bottom there too. <laughs> Talk about that in a minute. Um, I chose gold instead of perfect pearls. I mean, they're all perfect pearls, but the color perfect pearl. I chose gold because I felt like that was going to be a really nice kind of compliment in the background to all the yellow and orange I was going to have going on. Plus, I knew I was going to be including some purple and what is like more regal than purple and gold, right? So I have the little blocker on the bottom because I wanted the vast majority of my gold spatter to be behind my bouquet. Um, and at this point, I knew just because of the size of the watering can um, that it was going to be a design that was more on the left hand side of the card. So that's where I concentrated a lot of my gold spatter because I wasn't sure how high my bouquet was going to come up. Um, and then eventually I did move my little blocker and do a couple of little speckles on the brown part, but nothing that was too heavy handed. Now, um, you could totally use whatever size paper you want for this, but I happen to have my Nina kind of cut down to card front sizes. Um, and so I typically reach for my mini Misty. Um, but I, I do use the original Misty, like the original size Misty quite a bit. Um, and you could use obviously a bigger piece of paper with that because that is, I don't even know. What is it? Is it eight by eight? Is that what it is? 
you know, I should probably know this information, but I don't. Uh, but it's bigger. <laughs> it's much bigger. Um, but since I already have my papers like pre-cut, like this is just, I just reach for the mini most of the time. So I'm stamping out all my pieces parts. I'm giving myself enough room um, that I'm, because I'm going to be die cutting them out. So I'm giving myself enough room that I'm not going to be cutting into the other images. There's a couple of them that I stamped more than once. Um, the berries, the leaves, the acorns. Uh, those all got stamped multiple times because I didn't know those are like filler things you know what I'm saying like filler pieces and I wasn't really sure how many I was gonna need I did have some leftover I didn't end up using them all but it's okay no big deal so once I have those stamped I also stamped my pumpkins um, on another piece of paper but I did not feel the need to share that as we have seen me stamp two things now and I think you've gotten the idea because I bet you're pretty smart so here I just didn't get a good impression with some of my flower middles. Sometimes when they're um, more detailed in the middle, it, you have to stamp them twice just because uh, it's a hard to get a good impression. And then we're going to move on to the coloring. You will see that this is, like I said earlier, a little bit faster than I normally color things. But uh, decisions had to be made. That's just... It is what it is for this one because there was just so much coloring and I didn't want to cut any of it out um, in case you just got this set or you weren't sure how to color something. Um, I just, I wasn't willing to cut it out so I just sped it up. So yeah. Um, as far as, so it's World Card Making Day, which is wonderful. I will tell you that I almost never get to participate in World Card Making Day because it is always on a Saturday. And I work, <laughs> and I work, <laughs> um, I work a job where I work weekends, um, before I had this job where I kind of alternate weekends off, I worked a job where I worked weekends all the time. So I almost have never had world card making day off. Um, and I don't have off tonight. I have to go to work this evening, but, um, I made this, <laughs> I made this card two days ago. Consequently, I have a video to share with y'all on World Card Making Day. I do have another couple of cards that I'm working on that I'm hoping to maybe spend a little time with before um, before I go to work, because I do have a little bit of time um, even after I'm done with this voiceover. So I'm hoping to get some, some sort of crafty going on for World Card Making Day. There are, um, you know, there's classes and things like that. Like I would just check out uh, your most loved um, blogs and are blogs even a thing? I stopped posting on my blog, real talk, because um, it was just, it was just so time consuming. It makes me sad because I've had my blog for so long, um, but pretty much like unless I have a blog hop uh, and now even people have gone away from blog hops to like. YouTube hops or Instagram hops um, like I don't even post on there because I don't have enough time to do all of the things and something had to go like when I had Nathan um, I knew that I didn't have enough time to do all of the things that I wanted to do and so I had to cut something out of my schedule that was just something I just really didn't do anymore and for then it was television um, I just cut TV out. I just stopped watching it. I would rather read or make a card or work on some other craft that I had. If I was cross-stitching something, I would watch TV while I cross-stitched. Um, and I have a feeling with this new little baby uh, making its appearance that I may have a return back to cross-stitching um, since I will be so couch-bound. Um, but we'll have to see. Like, I might just, you know, bring items downstairs to color. Um, I'm not really sure. We'll have to, we'll have to see how things pan out. Um, but with my card making, with the videos, and it's just so, <laughs> I don't mean, I, I hope it doesn't sound like I'm ungrateful because I'm very grateful. I love the card making, um, quote unquote, base I have built um, over the years and doing the videos and um, I am very grateful for those things but it is it is quite time consuming 
uh, to film all the cards, take the photos, well, stage the photos, take the photos, then edit the photos, edit the video, do the voiceover. Um, it's just, it's, it's a lot. Um, and so something kind of had to give in order for me to be able to get my things up in a timely fashion. And for me, that was the blog. Um, I would be interested to know, do you still frequent people's blogs? Or is, do you only go to the blog like when you follow from Pinterest? Like, is the blog just a landing place or are you actively seeking out people's blogs? That's an interesting question. Um, so, yeah. Where was I at? What were we doing? You know what I have found? Pregnancy fog is a real thing. And my brain normally works real good. <laughs> You like that English? It works real good. But in the last couple of months, I have found that my brain has stopped working real good. And I find myself not remembering things or thinking that I had a conversation that I didn't have, which really is heaven for my husband. Because typically I have a very, very good memory. Um, and so right now he's kind of in a place where he can be like, no, no, but we didn't have that conversation and be right. Um, which I'm sure is very exciting for him. <laughs> um, but frequently I'm like, what am I doing? What was happening? I forgot the thing. Like there are sometimes like when you make your grocery list, I will make my grocery list. And then after I pick up my groceries, I have to go not back to the grocery store per se, but like to the, the store at the end of the street to kind of like supplement the things that I have forgotten to purchase just super not fun by the way um but we are 35 weeks so we are almost to the finish line whoop whoop almost there I can't it's very uncomfortable um but also like I realized they got to keep they got to stay in there for a little while longer bare minimum for lung development at least another week um but otherwise we are we're almost there we I don't even think we talked about my baby shower I was very on the fence I think I told you guys about having a baby shower since I have already had one because I already have a child who is eight um but most people were very encouraging and were like hey it's been eight years you don't have anything left which is true um when I got divorced the large majority of the things that we had saved were in the attic and I just didn't take them like it was such a quick thing um and so <laughs> like I certainly wasn't gonna call up my ex-husband and be like hey these are not those baby things like could I get them <laughs> um so we talked about it and decided to do a sprinkle which is you know the little teeny tiny version of a uh, baby shower. Um, and so we did that and it was thrown by, um, my mother-in-law and my sister-in-law and then my sisters and my mom, which was super nice of everybody to take the time out of their day to do it. Also side note, um, I had several of you had asked about where we were registered at. I told you, and I meant it. I totally appreciate the offer, but like, we're good. Thank you so much. Now I had two, <laughs> two of you did not listen to what I said, which I'm not even mad about. I totally respect because I pretty much do what I want to do anyway. Um, so to Deanna and Jackie, thank you so much um, for sending us um, some gifts off our registry. You're very sweet. We do appreciate them. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then so we did that. My sisters and just like everybody kind of had jobs doled out to them and one of my sisters did decorations and the other one did favors and so they decided on the theme of twinkle twinkle little star which was super cute um and so yeah it was a very like I don't know about y'all not that I don't like people because for the most part I do like people but I get over peopled super easily um, and especially being tired, like being this pregnant and tired, like I just, I get over people super quick. Um, and so we, uh, it was like four hours. It was like from one to four. 
and God bless my mother-in-law. She had like this itinerary in her, <laughs> in her head that she was like trying to keep everything on track because, um, Eric is not from where we live. Um, he's from another city about two hours away. Um, and so a lot of their friends were coming in from there, like driving in and then driving home. And she wanted to make sure everybody had time to drive in and drive home. Totally understand. Um, so at like the shower starts at one o'clock. First things first, we run into the little snafu um, of we booked the FOP lodge because I was not like I just didn't want people paying outrageous amounts of money for my little sprinkle and like all of the restaurants that we could find were outrageous amounts of money with like a minimum um spent which I totally get I understand like that especially after COVID like there there's a need to make up that income and I get it I just um it just seemed like a whole lot of money and it was cheaper to do it this way so we rented out the FOP Lodge and we were, it has to be in the member's name, which is me. So we were supposed to meet there at like noon to do a walkthrough. We get there at noon, <laughs> we get there at noon and the gate is locked. Nobody can get in. And like, you can't even get up the driveway and it's off of a main road. So like, as our family members are arriving, um, we're filling up this driveway to the point where I'm like, this guy's not even going to be able to pull in here because everybody is getting here at noon to help set up. So I call him and I'm like, hey, it's Kelly. I'm here and we're backing up your driveway. And he was like, you're backing up my driveway? I was like, yeah, at the FOP lodge. And he was like, oh, what are you there for again? And like now I'm starting to like kind of lightly sweat and panic because I'm like, what am I here for? What? What are you saying to me right now? Because, like, people are coming. The, the people are coming. Um, and I said, for my baby shower? <laughs> and he was like, oh, that's today. Yeah. Yeah, it is today. And he was like, okay, well, I'll text you the code to get into the gate. And then I'll text you um, the code to get the key out of the lockbox or whatever. So it ended up being fine. But we never did a walkthrough. And he calls me, like, as we're setting up. And he was like, did we ever get a chance to do a walkthrough? I was like, nope, we sure didn't. Sure did not. And he was like, okay, well, you know, there's a list of things that you got to do when you leave, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Like we, we can handle this. It's not like we've never rented a hall before. Right. So at one o'clock, the doors open people, well, people started coming in before that a little bit. And, um, so we're like greeting people and chatting and everything else at one <laughs> at one fifteen. My mother-in-law is like, okay, you guys are going to be the first ones to eat. So you're going to need to go over there and start the food so everybody else can start eating. And I was like, but, but ma, I'm still, I'm still greeting the peoples. Am I supposed to greet them with a plate of rigatoni in my hand? Like, I don't understand. And so I looked at Eric and I was like, what am I supposed to do? And he was like, just do what I like, just keep greeting people like we cannot we can't just be not greeting people when they come in and I was like okay I'm with you we're on the same page so we, we probably started eating a couple minutes after you know that like once most of the majority of people got in so we started eating and like I get it she's trying to keep a good pace I totally understand I'm here for it because everybody who's been to a wedding shower or baby shower knows the presents take the lar like the longest part and if you're not seated with people that, like, you're super good friends with, um, it can be very, very long. You know, very long. So I'm not trying to hold these people hostage. Like, I'm not trying to take captives. I'm, I'm trying to keep it going. But, like, you know, also maybe eat food. <laughs> eat my food. So, like, after we get done eating, um, like, she's immediately, like, y'all need to go over there and cut the cake so that people can get cake and you can start opening gifts and we can get the show on the road. And it's like, it's not even two. <laughs> it's not even two. And like, I don't know if you know, because like, if you've been pregnant that you know, but if you have not been pregnant, maybe you don't know that because your uterus expands to the size of a watermelon, I'm not exaggerating. That's how they explain it. A watermelon. Um, your stomach becomes very teeny tiny and it gets shoved up into your rib cage and then you have the world's worst heartburn all of the time. Everything's on fire. 
on the inside though, not on the outside. The fire's on the inside. And um, that's pretty much where I'm living at right now. Uh, I cannot eat anything that is tomato based anymore, but this was a few weeks ago when I was still kind of risking it and then just eating Tums. Um, I took, what did I take with peanut? I took the one that you take first and it kind of like neutralizes your stomach acid and then you don't get heartburn, um, which was fantastic until they found out that I believe it causes cancer and some birth defects. Um, so I they, they pulled it from the market and that's not an option. I've learned there's a lot of things they've pulled from the market since the last child that I've had. Thankfully, my child survived <laughs> with no <laughs> with no issues. Very grateful for that. Um, but so then like we make our way up there, we cut the cake, um, eat our cake. And then she's like, okay, presents, presents, presents. Like she was, I mean, she was on it. She was totally on it. And again, I totally get where she's coming from. And I'm just like, I'm being funny and teasing her. I genuinely appreciate her willingness to throw us the shower. And I know she was just trying to get through it in timely fashion. And so we went up there and did the presents and my um, husband was like, I didn't even think I had to stay here for this. And I was like, no, but you do. Like, n no, like, but you do have to stay. And he thought that that was completely unfair because his brother and his dad did not have to stay. Um, they got to go home and watch the football game, but also they aren't having a baby. See what I'm saying? I tried to explain this to him. Um, and so me and him and Peanut sat up there and opened our gifts. And then like, honestly, we were done. So we had the hall until four, like we were done opening gifts by th 3.30 and people were like out the door. Um, so her itinerary <laughs> was, uh, was even running even earlier because we were out the door period of the hall by 4.30. Like everything all cleaned up, mopped, swept, the whole deal. Also learned that all of the little things on the checklist that you have to do in order to get your, wait for it, $500 deposit back, um, I don't think anybody else was doing. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. I don't think other people were doing the vast majority of the things on the list because we did all the things on the list because that's the right thing to do. Um, and it appeared that many of the things had not previously been done. I'm just going to leave it at that. It was a little bit questionable as to when the last time that floor was swept and mopped. Maybe it's just me. Um, but it was wonderful and we got so many wonderful things. And then we also got some gift cards. So um, once we came home and there was, I guess there was an issue with the registry that when people were purchasing things, it wasn't necessarily taking them off the registry. So we got doubles of some things, which was no big deal. So the things that we got double, like we came home, unpacked them, went through everything. And then the things we got doubles of, we took back. And then with those, which that's a whole nother story. The, at some point, we'll talk about the target return policy, which I completely disagree with. But regardless, um, we don't have time to do it now. We're down to three minutes. Um <laughs> We took those back, we took the gift cards that we purchased, and then we purchased the other items that we would need. Um, some of them are like, they're not need right now, but they're need later in the future, so we can put them on Christmas lists and things like that. Uh, but we got all of the things that we needed right now. Um, so it was wonderful and very, very grateful to our family and friends for coming out and celebrating with us. Here, what you see me doing is I'm kind of, I had laid everything out and then I'm gluing them to themselves. I'm not gluing them to the background. I'm gluing them to themselves and building it up because I find that that is the easiest way to build a bouquet um, so that it's all just one solid piece. Now, if you were looking to do two tiers um, or two levels, like where you were including some foam tape, um, that gets a little bit more tricky, but still totally possible. I did not. I just glued them all together and then glued them um, flat to the card because there were so many die cuts. It already gives me a little bit of lift um, and is not flat to the card. 
So I do have a little bit of dimension and I was happy with that. Then it makes it super easy. That way you can just put down the whole piece at one time um, and have everything just, I don't, it just makes it so much easier with one solid piece. And then I added my little acorns as some decoration there on the bottom. I did not put a sentiment on this. Why did I not put a sentiment on this? Um, because I just feel like it was a super good neutral card for so many things. Like I could smack a happy birthday on this bad boy. I could smack a thinking of you. I could put a, um, like just a general, you know, cutest little pumpkin or grateful for you. Like it's, it's a kind of a flowers are universal, which is part of the reason why I love them so much. And, um, so I did not commit to a sentiment at this point. Um, but yeah, so that's the whole card. I hope you guys are enjoying your world card making day and that you found some inspiration here and enjoyed story time. And I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye.